I did too. <laughs> Yo! Uh, so, uh, Video Games Live. Uh, I've been a, a composer for over 22 years, and the reason I created Video Games Live is I wanted to prove to the world how culturally significant and artistic video games have become. But I also wanted to help usher in a whole new generation of young people to come out and appreciate the arts and uh, you know to get interested in, in some symphonies and symphonic music. Um, what is Video Games Live? Uh, uh, you know, it's all the greatest video game music of all time. Uh, performed by a symphony and choir, but what makes it really special and unique is everything is completely synchronized to massive video screens and stage show production and special effects and rock and roll lighting and uh, you know uh, interactive elements with the crowd. So I kind of like to describe Video Games Live as having all the power and emotion of a symphony orchestra, but combined with the energy and excitement of a rock concert mixed together with all the cutting edge visuals and interactivity and technology and fun that video games provide. And um, uh, as, as Janet was saying, you know, we, we, we want to make the symphony fun, you know, it, it, because it is fun and it can be fun. So, you know, what I did is I basically took all the stuff that my generation and younger grew up on. You know, we grew up on video games and video screens and interactivity and, you know, visual audience and, uh, you know, Star Wars and, you know, we're that, that audience of MTV and rock and roll lighting. So I basically took all that stuff and I combined it, you know, with uh, with the symphony. You know, it was, it was only a couple hundred years ago when uh, a bunch of Italians like myself uh, sat around a table and said, how can we reinvent the symphony, you know? and. Uh, they were saying, I had an idea, let's, let's dress people up in costumes. And let, let's tell a music, let's tell a story through the, through the vocals. And uh, why don't we build these elaborate sets on stage? You know, and that's how opera was, was formed. And um, mm -hmm. so, you know, maybe we're kind of like the opera of the 21st century a little bit in that, uh, you know, we're using all the things, like I said, over the last 20, 30 years. And, uh, you know, some people ask, well, you know, geez, this isn't, you know, symphonies are they're so posh and they're so, you know, everybody's in tuxedos and this and that. And, uh, you know, I, I always recall uh, reading about when the great Tchaikovsky uh, debuted the 1812 Overture. He had live cannons on stage, firing at the appropriate times, you Not know. Not at the audience. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and guys like Mozart and Beethoven, they were the rock stars of, of their time, you know. I've, I've always said that if Beethoven were alive today, he'd be a video game composer. There's no, no doubt in my mind, you know. He, he, he wouldn't be a film composer. He wouldn't want people talking over his music all the time. But, um, you know, and the, the audience um, really holds this music very, very dear to their hearts. Um, when you're playing a video game, you become that character. The music becomes the soundtrack of your life. You know, you're you're controlling, the, and and it's not like a motion picture, a film where you go. It's a passive experience. You're watching somebody else's story on screen unfold. There's lots of talking and dialogue, and there's music underneath, right? And take take the uh, the biggest movie of uh, biggest selling movie, Avatar. Can anyone here hum me the music to Avatar? No. Okay, so you know. I bet you can hum me Mario, though, a lot of you, right? Tetris and Zelda and you know, the rest. But with video games, when you become that character, you know, and that music becomes a part of your life, it becomes a part of, of you. So there's, there's so much more emotional connection. And, and gamers and, you know, people who play these games have, you know, it's, it reminds them of their childhood. Or, you know, I mean, we get people coming up to us after the show all the time with tears in their eyes going, man, when I started to hear Zelda, and uh, you know, I, I, I was brought back to when I was, you know, nine years old, and me and my dad always used to play that game together for hours and days and days, and he passed away, and boy, that just, you know, that just brought me right back to my childhood, and, that, and that's what Video Games Live is, is really about. It's a complete celebration uh, of of the video game industry, but but that feeling, that magic that happens when you have three, four, or five thousand people in a room. Um, and, and those feelings are, are, are going around. Um, 
The great thing, though, about, you know, some of the best letters and emails that we get after a show are actually from non-gamers, are from maybe parents who took their kids or grandparents who took their grandkids to the symphony for the first time. And uh, they're the ones most blown away because gamers know how cool video game music is already. You don't have to tell them that the music to Halo or Warcraft or Final Fantasy is great. They already know that. Uh, but when the parents see it, when the non-gamers see, see the show, they're the ones really most blown away. They're like, oh my gosh, I never knew the music was this powerful. I never knew the graphics were so incredible these days. And the characters and the storylines, I get it now. Now I know why my kids, you know, uh, play so many video games. Thank you so much for helping to open my eyes, you know. So we also represent the entire video game industry in that, you know, so you're hearing some of those old games like the Tetris and the Mario, but now played in its fullest, uh, you know, with a big uh, symphony and, and choir. And so, I'll tell you another quick story. Um, we were playing a show a couple months ago, and a woman in the orchestra, uh, she's the oboe player, she comes up to me uh, during the intermission and she says, uh, she says, you know, I just want to let you know, I, I've been playing in this symphony for about 20 years, and uh, my son, who's 17 years old, I've been trying to get him to come and see his mom play for, uh, for his whole life. And, she, and she, tears started streaming down her eyes, and she says, you know what, I, when I told her I was playing this show, this is the first night he's here tonight, first time to see me play, and he brought all his friends, he's been bragging to all his friends for the last month. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's something special, but Video Games Live isn't just for gamers, though. And that's that's the, the important thing, is that, you know, again, it's, it's a family experience. And we, we, don't, we don't show any violence and, you know, you edit all that stuff. It doesn't need to be there. Um, you know, most people, you know, might think that, oh, video games are, are bad, they're violent. Kids should go out in a cultural way. So, so a lot of... The families that, that end up coming to the show, like I said, it really is for everyone. They're the ones most blown away are, are, are the non-gamers. So, um, anyway, we're it's so, so proud and, and uh, thankful for, for everybody here for, for inviting us out uh, to the Middle East. We've, we've gotten so many emails uh, and Facebook messages over the years uh, from folks in, in this area. Um, to, to come out and play, and I mean, if any city in the world should have something as crazy as this, um, you know, Dubai should have been the first place we played, you know, it seems to be ahead of the curve. This is my very first time uh, to Dubai, the first time, uh, and uh, I gotta say, you know, from being in the United States, and you, know, you know, you see the stories that are done in the U.S., oh man, that place looks really cool, and this and that, but to come here for the first time, I've been here two days now, I mean, it's a it's a magical place. I mean, I was we were driving in. I'm like, this this looks like Star Wars. This is so cool, you know? How could we, you know? So I I think if any city were were to host video games live, this this would be the one. So it took us eight years to get here. We've been touring the show for over eight years, um, but you know, finally happy to to be here. It'll be really interesting to see what the uh, what the audience is, uh, how they perceive the show, and. Um, you know, it, it's something that's, that's very new. I mean, if you think about it, for the first time ever in the history of music, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of young people are coming out to see a symphony. That's never happened before. I mean, even in the time of Beethoven and Mozart, it was for rich old people. You know, that's, that's, what, that's, who, that's mainly who went to see the, the symphony, and, you know, the, the older folks. But, uh, and old people don't play video games. So you're doubly screwed, you know, and, and no one believed, uh, really believed in it, and by the way, that was the video games company was telling me that, and, uh, and so, uh, but it took me three years to put on the first show, started the company in 2002, we put our first show on, ever, the first show was at the Hollywood Bowl, uh, in 2005 at the LA Philharmonic, and, uh, you know, I, I figured, hey, I might as well go right for the, straight to the top, start at the top, and, uh, and you know, people were like, well, if, if, if maybe 2,000 people show up, you know, we'll, we'll be surprised. And uh, over 11,000 people showed up for that first show. And uh, we've been doing it ever since. So, um, 
you know, the, uh, and I think games are growing, you know, most people think that video games are just for teenage boys or something, you know, but the reality is uh, that the average video gamer is 35 years old. The average gamer is 35 years old. I'm about 44 myself, so I, again, I was the first generation to grow up on this stuff.